Today's video topic is energy balance, which simply put is when the energy we get from foods and drinks equals the energy our bodies use. Energy is what keeps us going, the fuel of life. We need it for growth, development, and for the functioning of all our body processes, including our internal organs. In fact, the normal functioning of our vital organs accounts for 60 to 70 percent of our daily energy requirement. This is called the basal metabolic rate. Around 10 percent of energy goes into digesting, absorbing and storing food, and the remaining energy goes into moving our bodies. Being physically active does not only mean doing sports, but any activity – walking, gardening, doing household chores, even fidgeting – counts. So if you don't refuel regularly, your body will slow down and you'll begin to feel lifeless. You get your energy from all foods and drinks that contain calories, the unit in which energy is expressed. It is the macronutrients, the carbohydrates, fats and proteins that deliver calories, as well as fiber and alcohol. The nutrition label tells you how much energy a food or drink contains. Usually the information is provided per 100 grams, but sometimes energy per portion is given as well. The average daily energy need is 2,000 kilocalories for women and 2,500 for men. But obviously these numbers are just indications. The real energy your body needs depends on a number of factors, including your genes, gender, age, lifestyle, and the level and frequency of your physical activity. These factors together determine your body composition, which refers to the amount of body fat in comparison with other body components, including bones, muscles, and organs. But beyond all the individual variations, what is true for everyone is that if the energy that we take in is equal to the energy we use, then the two sides will be in balance and we will maintain our body weight. If you live very actively and burn more calories than you consume, you will lose weight. On the other hand, if you lead a sedentary life and eat too many calories for that style of living, you are likely to gain weight over time. Of course, we're not talking about those occasional dinner feasts or couch potato sundays. It's the balance over the long term that matters. Being overweight or obese can lead to physical disabilities and psychological problems. It also drastically increases your risk of developing a number of non-communicable diseases, including cardiovascular disease, such as a heart attack or stroke, diabetes and cancer. Looks can be deceiving. You can be thin on the outside, but fat on the inside. Storing fat around the organs, as opposed to under the skin, increases your risk of health problems. How much fat you have and where it's located in your body is therefore a better marker for how healthy you are than just your body weight. The energy balance concept seems simple. Eat less, move more, lose weight. But actually it's a bit more complex as the components of the energy balance, energy in, energy out, are interrelated. Change one and the other is likely to change two. For example, when following a weight loss diet, you significantly reduce your energy intake, which will likely reduce your body weight, but then also your energy needs. In other words, the energy balance re-establishes itself, but at a lower level. This is because your basal metabolic rate decreases, or because you unconsciously compensate for a sudden shortage of energy by being less active, or both. In such a situation, when the energy balance is at a lower level, it's very easy to eat more than required, and your body is likely to go back to its initial weight or even gain more, which explains the so-called yo-yo dieting effect. The best way to bring back and keep the energy balance at a healthy level is by moving. Physical activity not only has positive effects on reducing the risks of diseases, it also improves mental well-being and increases opportunities for social interactions. As it raises your energy needs, you can eat more as well and enjoy a variety of foods and therefore get all the nutrients you need. But you don't have to practice extreme sports every day to keep the weight off. Big changes are hard to sustain and non-achievement causes frustration. Incorporating small but feasible steps into your everyday life is more likely to result in positive effects over time. Small steps, such as getting off the bus a stop earlier to go by foot a bit longer, or taking the stairs instead of the elevator. Food-wise, you can use smaller plates to reduce the portion size and make sure one-third of your plate is filled with veggies, or snack on fruits or yogurt. Each one of us can choose the small steps that fit with our likes and lifestyles. And each and every one of us can consciously make a change with each small step.
leading to a healthier life.